Good Wednesday morning, everybody. Dad finished up planting at his house last night. He got that field across the road done, or them three fields across the road, and the one around the oil well done. So he went pretty late. So I'm gonna, I guess I'm gonna unhook Bertha and use that to spread fertilizer. I gotta unhook it off the vertical till anyway. That way I don't have to unhook scooter. Off the sprayer because I still got spraying to do. So let's see. He dumped golden harvest in there. So he's got plenty of seed to get started. I hear you. I just don't see you. Where you at? Huh? Where are you at? He smells something. We've got a couple coon out here. That need to be, oops, sorry, that need to be gotten rid of. So yeah, we need to put fertilizer in there and he'll have to take more seed with him or I'll have to run it over to him, one or the other. But I'm gonna go get Bertha unhooked off the vertical till. Well, technical difficulties. I thought I turned the camera on, had it sitting right there. <laughs> Got everything unhooked. That. Uh, <coughs> crane pad that I found makes for a good jack stand. <coughs> so now I gotta change the PTO shaft out. It's got the big thousand or it's got the small thousand in it. I need to put the 540 in it. So we'll pull up here by the barn. Make sure nothing's following us. Looks good. So yeah. We'll get that changed out. There's a box right here. It's got all three PTO well two. The small thousand is in it for running the grain cart. And the 540 and a big thousand in there. So we'll change her to the 540 and uh, go from there. All right, grab my socket set. If any of you guys have this little cobalt setter, you ever buy one? Here, let me show you. That's what the front of it looks like. Make sure you open it upside down. Because this stuff falls out when you don't. The stuff in that side, which you would think is the bottom, is all attached. But this stuff just lays there. So, I think, if I remember correct, we got to take this, these three bolts out. Yeah, looks like you better get an impact. Hang on. All right, got the hillbilly impact. Yeah, I broke that one loose already. Actually, I got them all three broke loose. I don't think I've ever changed this. Well, no, I think I did because I think the big thousand was in it when I got it.
see there's the difference see how short long that stub is how short that one is when you push that one in there that long nose pushes a shifter basically and this one don't so that that won't go in the high it'll say 540 that's how the tractor knows which one you've installed and it's a little bit of overkill for spreading fertilizer but you know what this tractor's got guidance on it and the rest of them don't so well scooter does but scooters hooked up to the sprayer and i don't want to unhook that and this one needed unhooked from the vertical till so we'll use this one to spread fertilizer Preci precisely with the guidance Okay, well, uh, yeah, it comes in this case, so yeah, pretty nice. I don't think I have all the parts though. I don't know what's supposed to be in this big area and what goes in, what goes in that slot. And what's locked into there? Probably that ring. Well, that little, that ring looks like it fits in there. So, hmm. I don't know. Came with the tractor. All right, we'll get this thing ready to go. Uh, check the oil. I know it's good. This thing don't burn no oil. Yep, right on the money. I was talking about the aftermarket turbocharger on it. Here's, it's got its own uh, filter. The pressure, oil, oil comes out of the block here and goes up through this filter before it goes to the turbo. So, you know, here's your regular oil filter. Here's the filter for your turbocharger. Oh, I see dad's got rocks. Let me get rid of that. So we run starter fertilizer, comes out of the Keaton seed firmers right here in every row. So we put on about five gallon of the acre and it's nitrogen and it's got an additive in it too, but the, the stuff separates when it sets. So we'll run that hose back here, we'll start her up circulator a little bit I'm gonna where can I stick you guys right there
okay, we're filling. Now, if you're going for an exact amount, you got to throttle this one back because the line from the fill comes over here and tees, so most of it's going to go straight through. Then this line here comes down and tees into there and then fills the tank. So you get this one to where you want it because it fills a lot faster. Then you shut that tank valve off and let this one fill up. Just looking at all the chains and making sure all the wheels are still on it. See, this has got the same kind of system as our grain drill. Change these two sprockets out. There's your assortment of them. That's how you change your population by the speed at which the that shaft turns. This shaft goes all the way from one side of the planter to the other. Every row unit has a chain comes back in here and turns turns the unit. Okay, so I shut the other side off. It's about around, around 140 gallons. So I'll let this one fill up. When you open all the valves up, they, they'll even out. We're sitting a little downhill that way too, so. this valve that goes to the pump didn't think about that I'll remember next time so I'll shut the valve off on the bottom of the tank first and let the pump that way there's no pressure on this line when I unhook it still lose a little bit You'll lose what's from this valve to that valve. All right. This one's not real convenient to get to. I love them little Honda motors. Alright, I'm gonna put the lid back on that, which takes two hands. And should be ready to go. All right. I'll get the computer changed over, the monitor changed over. Dad struggles with this. I do too. Waiting for calibration. So he planted 42.53 acres at his house. So, area. Clear.
disable that area counter. Bring it down to Woodville number five and enable this counter. Okay, so now if I go back up to three, it should tell me. Nope, I cleared it. Oh well, I can go back to the video and bring it up if I have to. So there's the check mark. Alright. So now this bottom number here is scanning the population and it'll go through each each of the six rows and this will be the area, the acre counter. And then you can go to row spacing. So yeah, she's set. I'm gonna wash the windows. So that's what I pulled it up here. All right, well, I had to reprogram the guidance in this thing. I, I think I told you about that the other day in the scooter. I had to uh, redo my, uh, that's an aftermarket, but this is the actual case one, but still I had to, I had to go in and cancel. Uh, disable 138, satellite 138, and go and enable satellite 135 and a couple minutes later boop, it took off so that's the main reason i wanted to use this tractor is for the guidance because this field has worked kind of at one angle and it's harvested at another angle so i wanted the guidance to keep it straight that way if i run out of material prematurely or i've got something left i can say listen i spread it with the guidance every 40 feet every 40 feet and I didn't have enough. You set the machine, I didn't do it. So, and it, it's happened in the past. I mean, it happens. Uh, one half of a crank on the back and you run out. But, so, but I was able to say, you know, I spread that, I spread it with the guidance every 40 feet, just like you said. And they said, okay, here you go. Go finish your field, you know, just, and like I said, I worked it one way with the vertical till and it's harvested another way and it's weedy, so trying to follow the rows and stuff like that, it would have been not that good. So that's why I use this tractor. And I like driving it. This is the first time I ever spread with it, so it's going good. Anyway, uh, one more pass on this field and uh, then we'll hit that little one over there. This field's kind of a pain. It's a little field, it's nine acres, and it's pretty much square. So regardless of which way you farm it, it's just short, turn, short, turn, short, turn, short, turn, short, turn. So I farm it east and west because they say crops grow better east and west because the sun gets into the, into the rows better. So that's the way I do it. And 
and uh, then I can use the lane here for uh, the trucks. Oh, I missed that one. There we go. And actually, I had to map that field back there because I only had one where I had worked it. I had never planted with this tractor or anything in that field, oddly enough. So I had to I had to go around and set A B lines, straight lines all the way around well, three sides. I didn't go along the woods because that's crooked. But this field's the same way. I've got one, so I'm actually using the headlands off of that field to do this field. Because the road is straight line on that end of the field. So that's how you do it. Or that's how I do it. And we still got a bunch of fertilizer left. So once I get done, I'll go around the well. I still got six acres in this field to do. Uh, you guys see in there? But anyway, when I get done, I'll run around the headlands and I'll put an extra pass down there and down along the road so this corn on the road grows the best, you know. That's how you do it when you got extra fertilizer. You put it along the road to make that look good. Leave me a comment if you've ever done that guys at the farm come on tell the truth all right finished up spreading um i'll unhook this but dad called while i was just about uh, i was two-thirds done with that field and he's about out of corn so we're gonna run over there with some corn we'll throw some corn in the truck and run over there and get him some corn so all right. All right, got seed over to dad. He was 7.2 acres in, so I took him six bags of this uh, wick off slash French's. That won't be enough for him to get done over there, but it's sprinkling over there pretty good, so I don't know if he's going to get done. So, anyway, in the meantime, I'm going to get Bertha off of the spreader hook the spreader onto the truck here and uh, take it back up to the andersons all right well i got bertha on hooked and i backed up that uh, pto shaft sticking up right in the middle makes a pretty good aiming point out of the rearview mirror if you use the bed bolts the bolts in the tailgate and uh, i thought i'd have to crank it down some but the hitch slid right in there i felt it hit i felt it start to hit and it went right underneath the top clevis part so I pulled ahead a little bit if I'd have stayed where I was I'd have probably been all right could have dropped the pin in it but I had to get back in the truck and back her up about three inches but uh, yeah so that uh, PTO shaft and the, and the red part that you can see makes it really good to line up to get her hooked up so we'll run this back up to the Andersons and drop it off we're done with it so all right I think I might go to bed although like I said dad's gonna need some more corn over there so I'll wait for his call all right fertilizer spreader delivered <laughs> I think I've said it before but this truck I don't know if you can see that 146,000 miles it's a 97 three-quarter ton cab and a half eight foot <laughs> okay like I was saying before the battery died again um, yeah that truck of dad's is something else it purrs like a kitten seven three I'd hook that truck onto my big old camper and I'd go to California with it I'd leave tomorrow with it that's how much I trust that truck it just you don't drive it in the winter the body's super clean it gets parked in the shed 149,000 miles so yeah she's a peach but he called he's back out of corn again and uh, so I'm running six more bags over for him and uh, that'll get him done over there the roads wet here but uh, evidently it's drying up over Woodville to yeah, see the roads drying up here 
mile and a half north of my house there and the road's dried up so some of the fields so anyway he'll be able to finish that get back to my place and uh I don't know if he's going to want to plant anything or whether he's just going to put her in the barn and call her a day. That'll be up to him. So, we'll see you over there. It's wetter at home. Yeah, take that. Damn thing. Huh. Okay. That's the way you want to be. I learned that from you. <laughs> Keeping track because you're not writing shit down. Well, you know, I, ain't. Down. I asked you if you're doing the paperwork and you said no. Hey, I do the paperwork in the evening. Okay. I got that wrote down in there. on the grain drill but I figured nope I'm gonna leave the barn open so you can pull in there all right six bags of Eberts what do you got six rounds no what are your acres at right now 20 20 exactly. total so yeah all right I some 12 okay He's rolling again. Brought him a beer. Sat there and drunk a beer with him. And uh, we need six, six and a half bags to finish. And he's got six in it. So I'm going to go to his house while to do finish this and do the one small field at my house. So I am going to go to his house where the rest of the seed corn is and grab six bags and bring them over and put them in the barn at my house. That way he's got seed there to put in if he feels like uh, running that little field of mine on the corner, or not the one on the corner, but the little eight and a half acre one. 
So we just had a deer come out in front of us down there. And I don't know if you can see them up there, but there's uh, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, either ten or eleven turkeys out here. Just wait for us to plant the food plot for them. Disappearing into the woods. We've had turkeys over here for a long time. I'll bet close to 20 years we've had turkeys over here. Just showed up one year. <laughs> I don't know where they came from. So, anyway, I'm going to head to Dad's, get some seed corn, put it in the barn for him and then going to bed so we'll uh catch up with you tomorrow in case something interesting happens thanks for watching everybody okay i went over to dad's in the garage over there and grabbed the last of the seed corn Small seed this year, 44 pound bags. Seeds per pound, 1,802. Yep, 1,802 seeds per pound. should, by rights, finish everything. So, had a little shower come through here while I was at, over there at the house trailer. I could see it. But I think that went east of Dad over there at Woodville, so. He should be about done, real close. And then he's either gonna start on that little field that we spread fertilizer on last, or he's gonna put it in the barn and call it a day. I'm thinking he'll probably, being as rain's coming, he'll probably try and at least get that, uh, at least get that little field done. It's only eight and a half acres. But like I said, when I was spreading fertilizer, it's it's not a fast field. It's small and it's square. So you can't make time. Drive a little bit, turn around. Drive a little bit, turn around. Drive a little bit, turn around. That's how you get across that one. So anyway, I am going to unload these seed bags and I'm going in the house and going to bed. So, good night, everybody.